Fossil fuel phase-out is the gradual reduction of the use fossil fuels to zero use. Current efforts in fossil fuel phase involve replacing fossil fuels with alternative energy sources in sectors such as transport, heating and industry. Topic. Fossil fuels Topic. Coal As of 2017 coal supplied over a quarter of the world's primary energy and about 40% of the greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels. Although many, but not all, agree that to meet the 2 degrees Celsius target in the Paris Agreement coal must be phased out worldwide there is much disagreement about how quickly this should be done. As of 2018, 30 countries and many sub-national governments and businesses had become members of the Powering Past Coal Alliance, each making a declaration to advance the transition away from unabated coal power generation. As of 2019, however, the countries which use the most coal have not joined, and some countries continue to build and finance new coal-fired power stations. In 2019 the UN Secretary-General said that countries should stop building new coal power plants from 2020 or face total disaster. Topic. Oil. Oil is refined into fuel oil, diesel and gasoline. The refined products are primarily for transportation by conventional cars, trucks, trains, planes and ships. Popular alternatives are human-powered transport, public transport, electric vehicles, and biofuels. Natural gas Natural gas is widely used to generate electricity and has an emission intensity of about 500 grams per kilowatt hour. Heating is also a major source of carbon dioxide emissions. Leaks are also a large source of atmospheric methane. In some countries natural gas is being used as a temporary bridge fuel to replace coal, in turn to be replaced by renewable sources or a hydrogen economy. However this «bridge fuel» may significantly extend the use of fossil fuel or strand assets, such as gas-fired power plants built in the 2020s, as the average plant life is 35 years. Although natural gas assets are likely to be stranded later than oil and coal assets, perhaps not until 2050, some investors are concerned by reputational risk. Natural gas phase out is progressing in some regions, for example, with increasing use of hydrogen by the European Network of Transmission System Operators for Gas and changes to building regulations to reduce the use of gas heating. Topic. Basis The reasons for phasing out fossil fuels are, the health risks of air pollution, mitigation of global warming, and the falling cost of renewable energy. Topic health Most of the millions of premature deaths from air pollution are due to fossil fuels. Pollution may be indoors e.g. from heating and cooking, or outdoors from vehicle exhaust. One estimate is that the proportion is 65% and the number 3.5 million each year. According to Professor Sir Andy Hines at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine the health benefits of phasing out fossil fuels measured in money estimated by economists using the value of life for each country are substantially more than the cost of achieving the 2 degrees Celsius goal of the Paris Agreement. Topic. Global warming mitigation In 2008, James Hansen and nine other scientists published a journal article titled, 
target atmospheric CO2, where should humanity aim?" which calls for a complete phase out of coal power by 2030. More recently, Hansen has stated that continued opposition to nuclear power threatens humanity's ability to avoid dangerous climate change. The letter, co-authored with other climate change experts declared, "...if we stay on the current path," he said, "...those are the consequences we'll be leaving to our children." The best candidate to avoid that is nuclear power. It's ready now. We need to take advantage of it. And continued opposition to nuclear power threatens humanity's ability to avoid dangerous climate change. Also in 2008, Pushka Karasha and James Hansen published a peer reviewed scientific study analyzing the effect of a coal phase out on atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. Their baseline mitigation scenario was a phase out of global coal emissions by 2050. The authors describe the scenario as follows. The second scenario, labeled coal phase out, is meant to approximate a situation in which developed countries freeze their CO2 emissions from coal by 2012 and a decade later developing countries similarly halt increases in coal emissions. Between 2025 and 2050 it is assumed that both developed and developing countries will linearly phase out emissions of CO2 from coal usage. Thus in coal phase out we have global CO2 emissions from coal increasing 2% per year until 2012, 1% per year growth of coal emissions between 2013 and 2022, flat coal emissions for 2023 to 2025, and finally a linear decrease to zero CO2 emissions from coal in 2050. These rates refer to emissions to the atmosphere and do not constrain consumption of coal, provided the CO2 is captured and sequestered. Oil and gas emissions are assumed to be the same as in the bow business as usual scenario. Karasha and Hansen also consider three other mitigation scenarios, all with the same coal phase out schedule but each making different assumptions about the size of oil and gas reserves and the speed at which they are depleted. Under the business as usual scenario, atmospheric CO2 peaks at 563 parts per million ppm in the year 2100. Under the four coal phase out scenarios, atmospheric CO2 peaks at 422 to 446 ppm between 2045 and 2060 and declines thereafter. The key implications of the study are as follows a phase out of coal emissions is the most important remedy for mitigating human induced global warming. Actions should be taken toward limiting or stretching out the use of conventional oil and gas, and strict emissions based constraints are needed for future use of unconventional fossil fuels such as methane hydrates and tar sands. Topic. Others The impulse of renewable energy can create jobs through the construction of new power plants and the manufacturing of the equipment that they need, as could be seen in the case of Germany and the wind power industry. Topic. Studies about fossil fuel phase-out In the Greenpeace and ERECs Energy Evolution Scenario, the world would eliminate all fossil fuel use by 2090. In December 2015, Greenpeace and Climate Action Network Europe released a report highlighting the need for an active phase out of coal fired generation across Europe. Their analysis derived from a database of 280 coal plants and included emissions data from official EU registries. A September 2016 report by Oil Change International concludes that the carbon emissions embedded in the coal, oil, and gas in currently working mines and fields, assuming that these run to the end of their working lifetimes, will take the world to just beyond the 2 degrees Celsius limit contained in the 2015 Paris Agreement. 
agreement and even further from the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal. The report observes that, one of the most powerful climate policy levers is also the simplest, stop digging for more fossil fuels. In October 2016, the Overseas Development Institute and 11 other NGOs released a report on the impact of building new coal-fired power plants in countries where a significant proportion of the population lacks access to electricity. The report concludes that, on the whole, building coal-fired power plants does little to help the poor and may make them poorer. Moreover, wind and solar generation are beginning to challenge coal on cost. A 2018 study in Nature Energy suggests that 10 countries in Europe could completely phase out coal fired electricity generation with their current infrastructure, whilst the United States and Russia could phase out at least 30%. Topic: <laughs> Challenges of fossil fuel phase out. The phase-out of fossil fuels involves many challenges, and one of them is the reliance that currently the world has on them. In 2014, fossil fuels provided 81.1% of the primary energy consumption of the world, with approximately 11,109 MTOE. This number is composed by 4,287 MTOE of oil consumption, 3,918 MTOE of coal consumption, and 2,904 MTOE of natural gas consumption. Fossil fuel phase out can lead to an increment in electricity prices, because of the new investments needed to replace their share in the electricity mix with alternative energy sources. Another cause to increasing electricity price comes from the need to import the electricity that can't be generated nationally. Another impact of a phase out of fossil fuels is in the employment. In the case of employments in the fossil fuel industry, a phase out is logically undesired, therefore, people in the industry will usually oppose any measures that put their industries under scrutiny. Enda T. Venerium and Elizabeth Ivers Fladen studied the relationship between employment in the fossil fuel industry with the support to climate change policies. They proposed that one opportunity for displaced drilling employments in the fossil fuel industry could be in the geothermal energy industry. This was suggested as a result of their conclusion, people and companies in the fossil fuel industry will likely oppose measures that endanger their employments, unless they have other stronger alternatives. This can be extrapolated to political interests, that can push against the phase out of fossil fuels initiative. One example is how the vote of U.S. Congress members is related to the preeminence of fossil fuel industries in their respective states. Topic. Legislation and initiatives to phase out coal Topic. Major economies In 8 June 2015, several newspapers ran an article wrote that the leaders of the Group of Seven or G7, consisting of Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United Kingdom, and the United States agreed to phase out fossil fuel use by 2100, as part of the efforts to keep global temperature increase under 2 degrees Celsius. This was done as a prelude for the United Nations Climate Change Conference aka COP21 hosted in Paris on December of the same year. Topic: <inaudible> Australia. The Australian Greens Party have proposed to phase out coal power stations. The New South Wales Greens proposed an immediate moratorium on coal-fired power stations and want to end all coal mining and coal industry subsidies. The Australian Greens and the Australian Labor Party also oppose nuclear power. 
the federal government and Victorian state government want to modify existing coal-fired power stations into clean coal power stations. The federal Labor government extended the mandatory renewable energy targets, an initiative to ensure that new sources of electricity are more likely to be from wind power, solar power and other sources of renewable energy in Australia. Australia is one of the largest consumers of coal per capita, and also the largest exporter. The proposals are strongly opposed by industry, unions and the main opposition party in Parliament now forming the party in government after the September 2013 election. Canada In 2005, Canada annually burned 60 million tonnes of coal, mainly for electrical power, increasing by 15% annually. In November 2016, Canada announced plans to phase out coal-fired electricity generation by 2030. Beginning in 2005, Ontario, Canada planned coal phase-out legislation. Ontario annually consumed 15 million tonnes of coal in large power plants to supplement nuclear power. Nantico generating station was a major source of air pollution, and Ontario suffered «smog days» during the summer. In 2007, Ontario's Liberal government committed to phasing out all coal generation in the province by 2014. Premier Dalton McGuinty said, "...by 2030 there will be about 1,000 more new coal-fired generating stations built on this planet. There is only one place in the world that is phasing out coal-fired generation and we're doing that right here in Ontario." The Ontario Power Authority projects that in 2014, with no coal generation, the largest sources of electrical power in the province will be nuclear 57%, hydroelectricity 25%, and natural gas 11%. In April 2014 Ontario Canada was the first jurisdiction in North America to eliminate coal in electricity generation. The final coal plant in Ontario, Thunder Bay Generating Station, stopped burning coal in April 2014. China There are currently no plans to phase out coal burning power stations in the People's Republic of China on the national level. China's exceedingly high energy demand has pushed the demand for relatively cheap coal-fired power. Each week, another 2 gigawatts of coal-fired power is put online in China. Coal supplies about 80% of China's energy needs today, and that ratio is expected to continue, even as overall power usage grows rapidly. Serious air quality deterioration has resulted from the massive use of coal and many Chinese cities suffer severe smog events. As a consequence, the region of Beijing has decided to phase out all its coal-fired power generation by the end of 2015. In 2009, China had 172 gigawatts of installed hydro capacity, the largest in the world, producing 16% of China's electricity. The 11th five year plan has set a 300 gigawatts target for 2020. China built the world's largest power plant of any kind, the Three Gorges Dam. In addition to the huge investments in coal power, China has 32 reactors under construction, the highest number in the world. Analysis in 2016, showed that China's coal consumption appears to have peaked in 2014. European Union In July 2014, CAN Europe, WWF European Policy Office, HEAL, EEB and Climate Alliance Germany published a report calling for the decommissioning of the 30 most polluting coal-fired power plants in Europe. Topic. 
Topic: Belgium. After the government denied a 2009 application to build a new power plant in Antwerp, the Langelo power station burned its last tonne of coal in March 2016, ending the use of coal-fired power plants in Belgium. Denmark As part of their climate policy plan, Denmark stated that it will phase out oil for heating purposes and coal by 2030. Additionally, their goal is to supply a 100% of their electricity and heating needs with renewable energy five years later i.e. 2035. France. In December 2017, to fight against global warming, France adopted a law banning new fossil fuel exploitation projects and closing current ones by 2040 in all of its territories. France thus became the first country to program the end of fossil fuel exploitation. Germany Hard coal mining has long been subsidized in Germany, reaching a peak of 6.7 billion euros in 1996 and dropping to 2.7 billion euros in 2005 due to falling output. These subsidies represent a burden on public finances and imply a substantial opportunity cost, diverting funds away from other, more beneficial public investments. In 2007, Germany announced plans to phase out hard coal industry subsidies by 2018, a move which is expected to end hard coal mining in Germany. This exit is later than the EU mandated end by 2014. Solar and wind are major sources of energy and renewable energy generation, around 15% as of December 2013, and growing. Coal is still the largest source of power in Germany. In 2007, German Chancellor Angela Merkel and her party agreed to legislation to phase out Germany's hard coal mining sector. That does not mean that they support phasing out coal in general. There were plans to build about 25 new plants in the coming years. Most German coal power plants were built in the 1960s, and have a low energy efficiency. Public sentiment against coal power plants is growing and the construction or planning of some plants has been stopped. A number are under construction and still being built. No concrete plan is in place to reduce coal-fired electricity generation. As of October 2015, the remaining coal plants still under planning include, Niederausem, Profen, and Stade. The coal plants currently under construction include, Mannheim, Hamde, Dateln, and Wilhelmshaven. Between 2012 and 2015, six new plants went online. All of these plants are 600 1800 MWE. In 2014, Germany's coal consumption dropped for the first time, having risen each year since the low during the 2009 recession. A 2014 study found that coal is not making a comeback in Germany, as is sometimes claimed. Rather, renewables have more than offset the nuclear facilities that have been shut down as a result of Germany's nuclear phase out. Atomostig. Hard coal plants now face financial stringency as their operating hours are cut back by the market. But in contrast, lignite fire generation is in a safe position until the mid 2020s unless government policies change. To phase out coal, Germany should seek to strengthen the emissions trading system EU ETS, consider a carbon tax, promote energy efficiency, and strengthen the use of natural gas as a bridge fuel. In 2016, the German government and affected lignite power plant operators Mibrag RWE, and Vattenfall reached an understanding Bestandigung, on the transfer of lignite power plant units into security standby Uberführung von Braunkohlekraftwerksblocken in Die Sicherheitsbereitschaft. 
As a result, eight lignite-fired power plants are to be mothballed and later closed, with the first plant scheduled to cease operation in October 2016 and the last in October 2019. The affected operators will receive state compensation for foregone profits. The European Commission has declared government plans to use €1.6 billion Euros of public financing for this purpose to be in line with EU state aid rules. A 2016 study found that the phase out of lignite in Lasatia by 2030 can be financed by future owner EPH in a manner that avoids taxpayer involvement. Instead, liabilities covering decommissioning and land rehabilitation could be paid by EPH directly into a foundation, perhaps run by the public company LMBV. The study calculates the necessary provisions at €2.6 billion. Euros. In November 2016, the German utility Steag announced it will be decommissioning five coal fired generating units in North Rhine Westphalia and Saarland due to low wholesale electricity prices. A coal phase out for Germany is implied in Germany's Climate Action Plan 2050, Environment Minister Barbara Hendricks said in an interview on 21 November 2016, "...if you read the Climate Action Plan carefully, you will find that the exit from coal-fired power generation is the imminent consequence of the energy sector target." By 2030, Half of the coal-fired power production must have ended, compared to 2014." She said, plans to cut down the ancient Hambach forest to extend the Hambach open pit mine in 2018 have resulted in massive protests. On 5 October 2018 a German court ruled against the further destruction of the forest for mining purposes. The ruling states, the court needs more time to reconsider the complaint. Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, welcomed the court's ruling. The forest is located approximately 29 km km west of the city centre of Cologne specifically Cologne Cathedral. In January 2019 the German Commission on Growth, Structural Change and Employment initiates Germany's plans to entirely phase out and shut down the 84 remaining coal-fired plants on its territory by 2038. Topic. Netherlands On the 22nd of September 2016, the Dutch Parliament voted for a 55% cut in CO2 emissions by 2030, a move which would require the closure of the country's five coal-fired power plants. The vote is not binding on the government however. Topic Spain in October 2018, the Sanchez government and Spanish labor unions settled an agreement to close 10 Spanish coal mines at the end of 2018. The government pre-engaged to spend €250 million Euro to pay for early retirements, occupational retraining and structural change. In 2018, about 2.3 per cent of the electric energy produced in Spain was produced in coal-burning power plants. Sweden As of 2019 coal is used to a limited extent to fuel three cogeneration plants in Sweden that produces electricity and district heating. The operators of these plants plan to phase out coal by 2020, 2022 and 2025 respectively. In addition to heat and power coal is also used for steel production, there are long-term plans to phase out coal from steel production. Sweden is constructing hydrogen-based pilot steel plant to replace coke and coal usage in steel production. Once this technology is commercialized with the hydrogen generated from renewable energy sources biogas or electricity, the carbon footprint of steel production would reduce drastically. Topic. 
Topic: India. India is the third largest consumer of coal in the world. India's Federal Energy Minister is planning to stop importing thermal coal by 2018. The annual report of India's Power Ministry has a plan to grow power by about 80 gigawatts as part of their 11th five-year plan, and 79% of that growth will be in fossil fuel-fired power plants, primarily coal. India plans four new ultra mega coal-fired power plants as part of that growth, each 4,000 megawatts in capacity. As of 2015, there are six nuclear reactors under construction. In the first half of 2016, the amount of coal-fired generating capacity in pre-construction planning in India fell by 40,000 megawatts, according to results released by the Global Coal Plant Tracker. In June 2016, India's Ministry of Power stated that no further power plants would be required in the next three years, and, "...any thermal power plant that has yet to begin construction should back off." In cement production, carbon-neutral biomass is being used to replace coal for reducing carbon footprint drastically. New Zealand In October 2007, the Clark Labor government introduced a 10-year moratorium on new fossil fuel thermal power generation. The ban was limited to state-owned utilities, although an extension to the private sector was considered. The new government under MP John Key NZNP elected in November 2008 repealed this legislation. In 2014, almost 80% of the electricity produced in New Zealand was from sustainable energy. On 6 August 2015, Genesis Energy Limited announced that it would close its two last coal fired power stations. South Africa As of 2007, South Africa's power sector is the eighth highest global emitter of CO2. In 2005–2006, 77% of South Africa's energy demand was directly met by coal, and when current projects come online, this ratio will increase in the near term. There are no plans to phase out coal-fired power plants in South Africa, and indeed, the country is investing in building massive amounts of new coal-fired capacity to meet power demands, as well as modernizing the existing coal-fired plants to meet environmental requirements. On April 6, 2010, the World Bank approved a $3.75 billion loan to South Africa to support the construction of the world's fourth largest coal-fired plant, at Medipi. The proposed World Bank loan includes a relatively small amount $260 million, for wind and solar power. Rated at 4800 MW, Medipi Power Station would join other mammoth coal-fired power plants already in operation in the country, namely Kendall Power Station 4100 MW, Majuba Power Station 4100 MW, and Matimba Power Station 4000 MW, as well as a similar capacity Kusil Power Station at 4800 MW, currently under construction. Kusil is expected to come online in stages, starting in 2012, while Metope is expected to first come online in 2013, with full capacity available by 2017. These schedules are provisional, and may change. Since 2008, South Africa's government started funding solar water heating installations. As of January 2016, there have been 400,000 domestic installations in total with free-of-charge installation of low-pressure solar water heaters for low-cost homes or low-income households which have access to the electricity grid, while other installations are subsidized. Topic. 
United Kingdom All coal-fired power stations will be closed by 2025 or earlier. This will not be a complete phase out of fossil fuels because gas-fired power stations will continue to provide some firm power. The closure of the last coal power station in 2016 ended coal-fired power production in Scotland. Coal power in England and Wales has also reduced substantially. In generating capability we have seen the closure of the Hinton heavies, and closure or conversion to biomass of the remaining coal plants will complete by 2025. In terms of actual production, by 2018 less it was than any time since the Industrial Revolution, and with the first, "...coal free day," in 2017. Coal supplied 5.4% of UK electricity in 2018, down from 7% in 2017, 9% in 2016, 23% in 2015, and 30% in 2014. Gas heating will be banned for new homes by 2025. Topic: United States. In 2017, fossil fuels provided 81% of the energy consumed in the United States, down from 86% in 2000. In 2007, 154 new coal-fired plants were on the drawing board in 42 states. By 2012, that had dropped to 15, mostly due to new rules limiting mercury emissions, and limiting carbon emissions to 1,000 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour of electricity produced. In July 2013, U.S. Secretary of Energy Ernest Moniz outlined Obama administration policy on fossil fuels. In the last four years, we've more than doubled renewable energy generation from wind and solar power. However, coal and other fossil fuels still provide 80% of our energy, 70% of our electricity, and will be a major part of our energy future for decades. That's why any serious effort to protect our kids from the worst effects of climate change must also include developing, demonstrating and deploying the technologies to use our abundant fossil fuel resources as cleanly as possible. Then U.S. Energy Secretary Stephen Chu and researchers for the U.S. National Renewable Energy Laboratory have noted that greater electrical generation by non-dispatchable renewables, such as wind and solar, will also increase the need for flexible natural gas-powered generators, to supply electricity during those times when solar and wind power are unavailable. Gas-powered generators have the ability to ramp up and down quickly to meet changing loads. In the US, many of the fossil fuel phase-out initiatives have taken place at the state or local levels. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> California. California's SB 1368 created the first governmental moratorium on new coal plants in the United States. The law was signed in September 2006 by Republican Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, took effect for investor-owned utilities in January 2007, and took effect for publicly owned utilities in August 2007. SB 1368 applied to long-term investments five years or more by California utilities, whether in state or out of state. It set the standard for greenhouse gas emissions at 1,100 pounds of carbon dioxide per megawatt hour, equal to the emissions of a combined cycle natural gas plant. This standard created a de facto moratorium on new coal, since it could not be met without carbon capture and sequestration. <laughs> Maine On April 15, 2008, Maine Governor John E. Baldacci signed LD 2126 an act to minimize carbon dioxide emissions from new coal-powered industrial and electrical generating facilities in the state." 
The law, which was sponsored by Rep. W. Bruce MacDonald D. Booth Bay, requires the Board of Environmental Protection to develop greenhouse gas emission standards for coal gasification facilities. It also puts a moratorium in place on building any new coal gasification facilities until the standards are developed. Oregon In early March 2016, Oregon lawmakers approved a plan to stop paying for out-of-state coal plants by 2030 and require a 50% renewable energy standard by 2040. Environmental groups such as the American Wind Energy Association and leading Democrats praised the bill. Texas In 2006 a coalition of Texas groups organized a campaign in favor of a statewide moratorium on new coal-fired power plants. The campaign culminated in a «Stop the Coal Rush» mobilization, including rallying and lobbying, at the state capitol in Austin on February 11 and 12, 2007. Over 40 citizen groups supported the mobilization. In January 2007, a resolution calling for a 180 day moratorium on new pulverized coal plants was filed in the Texas legislature by State Representative Charles Doc Anderson R. Waco as House Concurrent Resolution 43. The resolution was left pending in committee. On December 4, 2007, Representative Anderson announced his support for two proposed Integrated Gasification Combined Cycle IGCC coal plants proposed by Luminant formerly TXU. <laughs> Washington State Washington has followed the same approach as California, prohibiting coal plants whose emissions would exceed those of natural gas plants. Substitute Senate Bill 6001 SSB 6001, signed on May 3, 2007, by Governor Christine Gregoire, enacted the standard. As a result of SSB 6001, the Pacific Mountain Energy Center in Kalama was rejected by the state. However, a new plan proposal, the Wallula Energy Resource Center, shows the limits of the natural gas equivalency approach as a means of prohibiting new coal plants. The proposed plant would meet the standard set by SSB 6001 by capturing and sequestering a portion, 65%, according to a plant spokesman, of its carbon. Utility action in the U.S. Progress Energy Carolinas announced on June 1, 2007, that it was beginning a two-year moratorium on proposals for new coal-fired power plants while it undertook more aggressive efficiency and conservation programs. The company added. Additional reductions in future electricity demand growth through energy efficiency could push the need for new power plants farther into the future. Public Service of Colorado concluded in its November 2007 resource plan, in sum, in light of the now likely regulation of CO2 emissions in the future due to broader interest in climate change issues, the increased costs of constructing new coal facilities, and the increased risk of timely permitting to meet planned in-service dates, Public Service does not believe it would not be prudent to consider at this time any proposals for new coal plants that do not include CO2 capture and sequestration. Excel Energy noted in its 2007 resource plan that, "...given the likelihood of future carbon regulation, we have only modeled a future coal-based resource option that includes carbon capture and storage." Minnesota Power Company announced in December 2007 that it would not consider a new coal resource without a carbon solution. 
Avista Utilities announced that it does not anticipate pursuing coal-fired power plants in the foreseeable future. Northwestern Energy announced on December 17, 2007, that it planned to double its wind power capacity over the next seven years and steer away from new baseload coal plants. The plans are detailed in the company's 2007 Montana Electric Supply Resource Plan. California Energy Commission CEC, has initiated its review of two 53.4 MW solar thermal power plants that will each include a 40 MW biomass power plant to supplement the solar power. <laughs> Japan Japan, the world's third largest economy, made a major move to use more fossil fuels in 2012, when the nation shut down nuclear reactors following the Fukushima accident. Nuclear, which had supplied 30% of Japanese electricity from 1987 to 2011, supplied only 2% in 2012 hydropower supplied 8%. Nuclear electricity was replaced with electricity from petroleum, coal, and liquefied natural gas. As a result, electricity generation from fossil fuels rose to 90% in 2012. In January 2017, the Japanese government announced plans to build 45 new coal fired power plants in the next 10 years, largely to replace expensive electricity from petroleum power plants. Topic. Phase out of fossil fuel vehicles Many countries and cities have introduced bans on the sales of new internal combustion engine vehicles, requiring all new cars to be electric vehicles or otherwise powered by clean, non-emitting sources. Such bans include the United Kingdom by 2040 and Norway by 2025. Many transit authorities are working to purchase only electric buses while also restricting use of ICE vehicles in the city center to limit air pollution. Many U.S. states have a zero emissions vehicle mandate, incrementally requiring a certain percent of cars sold to be electric. <laughs> Public opinion Topic. Opinion polls Topic. Opinion research In October 2007, Civil Society Institute released the results of a poll of 1,003 U.S. citizens conducted by Opinion Research Corporation. The authors of the poll reported 75% of Americans including 65% of Republicans, 83% of Democrats, and 76% of Independents would support a five year moratorium on new coal fired power plants in the United States if there was stepped up investment in clean, safe renewable energy such as wind and solar and improved home energy efficiency standards, women were more likely than men to support this idea. Support also was higher among college graduates than among those who did not graduate from high school The exact question posed by the survey was as follows. More than half of power plant generated electricity comes from coal. Experts say that power plants are responsible for about 40% of U.S. carbon dioxide pollution linked to global warming. There are plans to build more than 150 new coal fired power plants over the next several years. Would you support a five year moratorium on new coal fired power plants in the United States if there was stepped up investment in clean, safe, and renewable energy such as wind and solar? 
and improved home energy efficiency standards. Would you say definitely yes, probably yes, probably no, definitely no, or don't know? The results were as follows. 30% Definitely yes. 45% Probably yes. 13% Probably no. 8% Definitely no. 4% Don't know. Topic. Gallup In 2013, the Gallup organization determined that 41% of Americans wanted less emphasis placed on coal energy, versus 31% who wanted more. Large majorities wanted more emphasis placed on solar 76%, wind 71%, and natural gas 65%. Topic. ABC News, Washington Post A 2009 ABC, Washington Post poll found 52% of Americans favored more coal mining, 33% strongly favored, while 45% opposed, 27% strongly opposed. The most support was for wind and solar which were favored by 91% 79% strongly favored. Topic clean call to action In October 2007, 15 groups led by Citizens Led for Energy Action Now clean called for a five-year moratorium on new coal-fired power plants, with no exception for plants sequestering carbon. The groups included Save Our Cumberland Mountains, Tennessee, Ohio Valley Environmental Council, West Virginia, Cook Inlet Keeper, Alaska, Christians for the Mountains, West Virginia, Coal River Mountain Watch, West Virginia, Kentuckians for the Commonwealth, Kentucky, Civil Society Institute, Massachusetts, Clean Power Now, Massachusetts, Indigenous Environmental Network, Minnesota, Castle Mountain Coalition, Alaska, Citizens Action Coalition Indiana, Appalachian Center for the Economy and the Environment West Virginia, Appalachian Voices NC, and Rhode Island Wind Alliance Rhode Island. Environmental Defense Fund The U.S.-based Environmental Defense Fund EDF has taken a stand in favor of natural gas production and hydraulic fracturing, while pressing for stricter environmental controls on gas drilling, as a feasible way to replace coal. The organization has funded studies jointly with the petroleum industry on the environmental effects of natural gas production. The organization sees natural gas as a way to quickly replace coal, and that natural gas in time will be replaced by renewable energy. The policy has been criticized by some environmentalists. EDF counsel and blogger Mark Brownstein answered, Demand for natural gas is not going away, and neither is hydraulic fracturing. We must be clear-eyed about this, and fight to protect public health and the environment from unacceptable impacts. We must also work hard to put policies in place that ensure that natural gas serves as an enabler of renewable power generation, not an impediment to it. We fear that those who oppose all natural gas production everywhere are, in effect, making it harder for the U.S. economy to wean itself from dirty coal. Other groups supporting a coal moratorium One Sky Co-op America Energy Action Coalition Kansas Sierra Club Led for Energy Action Now Clean Rainforest Action Network Rising Tide Australia Sierra Club Six degrees. Org. Step it up, two thousand and seven. 
Topic: Shareholder resolutions in favor of a coal moratorium. Trillium Asset Management, a social investment management company, submitted the resolution Moratorium on Coal Financing to Bank of America in the 2007-2008 shareholder resolution season. The resolution concluded Resolved, shareholders request that BOA's Board of Directors amend its GHG emissions policies to observe a moratorium on all financing, investment and further involvement in activities that support MTR coal mining or the construction of new coal burning power plants that emit carbon dioxide. Topic. Prominent individuals supporting a coal moratorium U.S. politician Al Gore stated, If you're a young person looking at the future of this planet and looking at what is being done right now, and not done, I believe we have reached the stage where it is time for civil disobedience to prevent the construction of new coal plants that do not have carbon capture and sequestration. Banker and financier Tom Sanzalo, currently first deputy controller for the state of New York, called for a moratorium on new coal plants in the state of Iowa. Citing slow growth in electricity demand and better alternative sources of energy, Sanzalo said, it's not only good public policy, it's great economics. Prominent individuals supporting a coal phase out Eric Schmidt, CEO of Google, called for replacing all fossil fuels with renewable sources of energy in 20 years. <laughs> Mayors supporting a coal moratorium On 13 October 2007, Pocatello, Idaho, Mayor Roger Chase told other mayors from across the state attending an association of Idaho City's Legislative Committee that he favored a moratorium no new coal plants in the state. On 1 June 2007, Park City, Utah, Mayor Dana Wilson wrote a letter to Warren Buffett expressing the city's opposition to three coal plants proposed by Rocky Mountain Power. In November 2007, Salt Lake City Mayor Mayor Rocky Anderson expressed his support for a coal moratorium at a rally organized by the Step It Up campaign. In December 2007, Charlottesville, VA, Mayor Dave Norris blogged in favor of a moratorium on new coal fired power plants. On 19 December 2007, Charlottesville passed the Charlottesville Clean Energy Resolution, putting the city on record as supporting a moratorium. Topic. Local governments supporting a coal moratorium In January 2008, Black Hawk County Iowa Health Board recommended that the state adopt a moratorium on new coal-fired power plants until it enacts tougher air pollution standards. Topic. Alternative sources of energy Alternative energy refers to any source of energy that can substitute the role of fossil fuels. Renewable energy, or energy that is harnessed from renewable sources, is an alternative energy. However, alternative energy can refer to non-renewable sources as well, like nuclear energy. Between the alternative sources of energy are, solar energy, hydroelectricity, marine energy, wind energy, geothermal energy, biofuels, ethanol and hydrogen. Energy efficiency is complementary to the use of alternative energy sources, when phasing out fossil fuels. Renewable energy. 
Renewable energy is energy that comes from resources which are naturally replenished such as sunlight, wind, rain, tides, waves, and geothermal heat. As of 2014, 19% of global final energy consumption comes from renewable resources, with 9% of all energy from traditional biomass, mainly used for heating, 1% from biofuels, 4% from hydroelectricity and 4% from biomass, geothermal or solar heat. Popular renewables wind, solar, geothermal and biomass for power, accounted for another 1.4% and are growing rapidly. While renewable energy supplies are growing and have displaced coal in some regions, the amount of coal burned in 2021, is expected to be the same as it was in 2014. Hydroelectricity In 2015, hydroelectric energy generated 16.6% .6 of the world's total electricity and 70% of all renewable electricity. In Europe and North America environmental concerns around land flooded by large reservoirs ended 30 years of dam construction in the 1990s. Since then large dams and reservoirs continue to be built in countries like China, Brazil and India. Run-of-the-river hydroelectricity and small hydro have become popular alternatives to conventional dams that may create reservoirs in environmentally sensitive areas. <laughs> Wind power A wind farm is a group of wind turbines in the same location used to produce electric power. A large wind farm may consist of several hundred individual wind turbines, and cover an extended area of hundreds of square miles, but the land between the turbines may be used for agricultural or other purposes. A wind farm may also be located offshore. Wind power has grown dramatically since 2005 and by 2015 supplied almost 1% of global energy consumption. Many of the largest operational onshore wind farms are located in the United States and China. The Gansu Wind Farm in China has over 5,000 MW installed with a goal of 20,000 MW by 2020. China has several other wind power bases of similar size. The Alta Wind Energy Center in California, United States is the largest onshore wind farm outside of China, with a capacity of 1,020 MW of power. As of February 2012, the Walney Wind Farm in the United Kingdom is the largest offshore wind farm in the world at 367 megawatts, followed by Thanet Offshore Wind Project 300 megawatts, also in the United Kingdom. As of February 2012, the Fantanil Kojilak Wind Farm in Romania is the largest onshore wind farm in Europe at 600 MW. There are many large wind farms under construction, and these include Sinus Holding Wind Farm, 700 Anholt Offshore Wind Farm, 400 Bard Offshore One, 400 Clyde Wind Farm, 350 megawatts; Greater Gabbard Wind Farm, 500 megawatts; Lynx Wind Farm, 270 megawatts; London Array, 1,000 megawatts; Lower Snake River Wind Project, 343 megawatts; MacArthur Wind Farm, 420 megawatts; Shepherd's Flat Wind Farm, 845 megawatts; and Sheringham Shoal, 317 megawatts. Wind power in Denmark produced the equivalent of 42.1% of total electricity consumption in 2015, however, use of wind for heating is minor. <laughs> Solar In 2017, solar power provided 1.7% of total worldwide electricity production, growing at 35% per annum. 
By 2020 the solar contribution to global final energy consumption is expected to exceed 1%. Topic: Solar photovoltaics. Solar photovoltaic cells convert sunlight into electricity and many solar photovoltaic power stations have been built. The size of these stations has increased progressively over the last decade with frequent new capacity records. Many of these plants are integrated with agriculture and some use innovative tracking systems that follow the sun's daily path across the sky to generate more electricity than conventional fixed mounted systems. Solar power plants have no fuel costs or emissions during operation. Topic: <laughs> Concentrated solar power. Concentrating solar power CSP systems use lenses or mirrors and tracking systems to focus a large area of sunlight into a small beam. The concentrated heat is then used as a heat source for a conventional power plant. A wide range of concentrating technologies exists, the most developed are the parabolic trough, the concentrating linear Fresnel reflector, the Stirling dish and the solar power tower. Various techniques are used to track the sun and focus light. In all of these systems a working fluid is heated by the concentrated sunlight, and is then used for power generation or energy storage. <inaudible> Biofuels Biofuels, in the form of liquid fuels derived from plant materials, are entering the market. However, many of the biofuels that are currently being supplied have been criticized for their adverse impacts on the natural environment, food security, and land use. Biomass <inaudible> <inaudible> Biomass is biological material from living, or recently living organisms, most often referring to plants or plant-derived materials. As a renewable energy source, biomass can either be used directly, or indirectly, once or converted into another type of energy product such as biofuel. Biomass can be converted to energy in three ways, thermal conversion, chemical conversion, and biochemical conversion. Using biomass as a fuel produces air pollution in the form of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, NOx nitrogen oxides, VOCs volatile organic compounds, particulates and other pollutants at levels above those from traditional fuel sources such as coal or natural gas in some cases such as with indoor heating and cooking. Utilization of wood biomass as a fuel can also produce fewer particulate and other pollutants than open burning as seen in wildfires or direct heat applications. Black carbon, a pollutant created by combustion of fossil fuels, biofuels, and biomass, is possibly the second largest contributor to global warming. In 2009 a Swedish study of the giant brown haze that periodically covers large areas in South Asia determined that it had been principally produced by biomass burning, and to a lesser extent by fossil fuel burning. Denmark has increased the use of biomass and garbage, and decreased the use of coal. Nuclear energy. The 2014 Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report identifies nuclear energy as one of the technologies that can provide electricity with less than 5% of the life cycle greenhouse gas emissions of coal power. There are more than 60 nuclear reactors shown as under construction in the list of nuclear power by country with China leading at 23. Globally, more nuclear power reactors have closed than opened in recent years but overall capacity has increased. 
China has stated its plans to double nuclear generation by 2030. India also plans to greatly increase its nuclear power. Several countries have enacted laws to cease construction on new nuclear power stations. Several European countries have debated nuclear phase-outs and others have completely shut down some reactors. Three nuclear accidents have influenced the slowdown of nuclear power. The 1979 Three Mile Island accident in the United States, the 1986 Chernobyl disaster in the USSR, and the 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster in Japan. Following the March 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster, Germany has permanently shut down eight of its 17 reactors and pledged to close the rest by the end of 2022. Italy voted overwhelmingly to keep their country non-nuclear. Switzerland and Spain have banned the construction of new reactors. Japan's Prime Minister has called for a dramatic reduction in Japan's reliance on nuclear power. Taiwan's president did the same. Shinzo Abe, the new Prime Minister of Japan since December 2012, announced a plan to restart some of the 54 Japanese nuclear power plants and to continue some nuclear reactors under construction. As of 2016, countries such as Australia, Austria, Denmark, Greece, Malaysia, New Zealand, and Norway have no nuclear power stations and remain opposed to nuclear power. Germany, Italy, Spain and Switzerland are phasing out their nuclear power. Topic: <inaudible> Energy efficiency. Moving away from fossil fuels will require changes not only in the way energy is supplied but in the way it is used and reducing the amount of energy required to deliver various goods or services is essential. Opportunities for improvement on the demand side of the energy equation are as rich and diverse as those on the supply side, and often offer significant economic benefits. A sustainable energy economy requires commitments to both renewables and efficiency. Renewable energy and energy efficiency are said to be the twin pillars of sustainable energy policy. The American Council for an Energy Efficient Economy has explained that both resources must be developed in order to stabilize and reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Efficiency is essential to slowing the energy demand growth so that rising clean energy supplies can make deep cuts in fossil fuel use. If energy use grows too fast, renewable energy development will chase a receding target. Likewise, unless clean energy supplies come online rapidly, slowing demand growth will only begin to reduce total emissions. Reducing the carbon content of energy sources is also needed. The IEA has stated that renewable energy and energy efficiency policies are complementary tools for the development of a sustainable energy future, and should be developed together instead of being developed in isolation. See also Beyond Coal, a campaign by the Sierra Club to promote renewable energy instead of coal Big Coal, the dirty secret behind America's energy future Burning the future, coal in America Clear Skies Act of 2003 United States. Electricity generation Energy policy Environmental impact of the coal industry Fossil fuel divestment Georgia Power Negative externalities New source review Nuclear power phase-out Poles, an energy model Renewable energy commercialization The coal question Thorium-based nuclear power Torrefaction, of biomass, for a coal-like replacement